morning. Welcome to Wesley's channel. This is Wesley and this is Wesley's news. Good morning. Come on, Mila. In many of my videos, I was calling it news. Actually, I was talking about one subject only. So I decided that it would be nice if I go with more interesting fans in one take. And that's what I'm trying to do now. We have Alexei Danilin, we have Morgan Company, we have their completely green fuel efficient car, and we have a few other hydrogen related things to discuss. And apart from that, we have also Photon and Photon interaction with Mira. Completely zero emissions car. Okay. Um, it was a it was a great advertisement for the company because people see a zero emissions car and they go, wow, Morgan, a sports car maker, is building something very environmentally friendly. Yeah. But then you actually get into Morgan and the brand, and it does a lot more when you realise that all the materials in this car are locally sourced, yeah. and that the factory itself isn't using big machinery; it's hand hand crafting these vehicles. It's yeah. a low energy manufacture. Yeah. The car is very lightweight. You've got all these other fantastic environmentally friendly sort of accreditations that are that are adding to it. So it was a although it is a zero emission vehicle, every Morgan is actually very environmentally friendly. They have a long lifespan that kept for a long period of time. So um, yeah, it was just a testament to the way in which we build cars considerably. Изобретатель из Санкт-Петербурга уверен, что придумал установку, сопоставимую по мощности с двигателем внутреннего сгорания. Вместо бензина у нее водород, а вместо поршня ударная волна. Как это работает, попытался понять мой коллега Юрий Баранюк. Старый гараж на окраине Петербурга вместо лаборатории. Здесь, на приусадебном участке, изобретатель Алексей Данилин пробует создать двигатель, который вместо выхлопных газов выбрасывал бы в атмосферу только обычную воду. Самым лучшим топливом будет водород. Водород, ну, водородно-кислородная смесь. Она при взрыве, в, с, при сгорании выделяет только чистую воду после охлаждения. Практически дистиллированным. В тестовый образец пока нельзя подать топливо. Эта трубка сделана, чтобы доказать, что внутри можно запустить ударную волну. Она должна работать как поршень в обычном автомобильном двигателе. Ударная волна это... wave is moving in speed faster than speed of sound in the air. That newly formed pressure wave which would be the longitudinal wave, is then used to initiate the movement in a steady magnetic field. By that it is creating changes to that field and that stands for creation of voltages and currents in the circuit. Basic mechanism for generation of electricity. Here you have basic components of the invention and uh, it doesn't look very much complicated, high voltage coils and a uh, set of spark gaps. Nothing special, nothing fancy, uh, looks quite nice, however efficiency of hydrogen is far below the one of gasoline in a combustion engine. But I might be wrong in here. I'm including PDF with pattern application filed by Mr. Danielin down in the description, so please take a look at it. Talking about pressure wave, longitudinal wave, we may talk about piezoelectrically induced pressure wave in resonance, very much given frequency, in the small jar of water creating nuclear processes of temperature many times more than the temperature inside the sun. 
Finally, the water to be placed in the container should have a considerably lower amount of dissolved air than the average water solution. This air can be removed by boiling the water or sealing the container after evacuating all air from the water. The action of withdrawing water using a pipette and then dropping the contents back into the container then creates a single bubble. For this bubble to undergo sonoluminescence, the sound level must be in the correct threshold. At a low sound level, the bubble will be trapped, and as the level rises, the bubble will begin to jitter and move sporadically. Raising it further will dramatically decrease the radius of the bubble's movement so then it appears fuzzy, and the bubble will grow larger. Slight increases of the sound level will put the bubble in a small and stable state, but too large of an increase will result in the bubble dissolving instantly. For sonoluminescence to occur, the sound level must be in the threshold between these two states. Once the bubble is in the correct state, it will start expanding. When it has reached its maximum size, the bubble collapses at an acceleration theoretically predicted to be larger than that of a black hole collapse. At the bubble's minimum radius, 500,000 photons of light are emitted in a flash of light that can be seen for shorter than 50 picoseconds, or 50 millionths of a millionth of a second. During this period, the interior of the bubble is twice as hot as the surface of the sun. Then, the bubble size rapidly fluctuates up and down until it reaches the small and stable state that it once started with. As these cycles occur incredibly fast under the correct circumstances, 40,000 flashes of light can be generated per second, which gives the bubble an appearance of a tiny, unblinking light and can be seen with the naked eye, despite the bubble itself being microscopic. More importantly, sonoluminescence can be used in sonofusion, which is the use of a collapsing bubble's power to achieve uncommon states of matter, or simply put, nuclear fusion in sonoluminescing bubbles. The first time I saw sonoluminescence was in a darkened room. I was transfixed to look at this uh, spherical flask of fluid and you look into the center and in the center see a, uh, a glowing blue purple light uh, which could be seen with the unaided eye. It looked like a star in the heavens. Seth Putterman called it the star in a jar. A tiny spot of bright light contained in a flask of liquid. This star in a jar is made when a sound wave is passed through a small bubble inside a flask of liquid. And this sound wave makes the bubble do something remarkable. First it expands, then it collapses. And this collapse happens so violently that vapor molecules trapped inside the bubble slam together and heat up so much that the bubble gives off an incredible burst of heat and light, several thousand times a second, giving the appearance of a star. What made the phenomenon so exciting was the temperature of this star in a jar. On its surface alone, the light burns at tens of thousands of degrees. And Seth Butterman now contemplated a tantalizing possibility. Could the core of the collapsing bubble be even hotter? Hot enough for fusion? One of the mysteries of sonoluminescence is to determine exactly how hot the interior of the bubble gets. In the sun, the interior can be millions of degrees, hot enough to uh, cause fusion. And the thought crossed my mind that perhaps inside the collapsing bubble, the interior of the bubble might also get hot enough to cause a fusion. If so, this would be something truly amazing. By simply bombarding tiny bubbles with sound waves, temperatures of over 10 million degrees would be created. And nuclear fusion, the same reaction that powers the sun, would be happening almost effortlessly here on Earth. Let's see if nature, during the process of evolution, was able to discover nuclear processes at a temperature higher than the temperatures on the surface of the sun. Are we the smartest species on the earth? Or maybe nature was smarter than us? So, we have a shrimp that weighs only 10 grams. And now that shrimp is able to create a punch that is remarkably strong and could be compared to the bite of the shark. But it's taking place in the millisecond region. So by that we may say anything that we can concentrate.
could be used. And then it would be a mechanical board, not a quantum board. A simple pressure or compression wave in a very fast frame of time that we could apply and we could get real nuclear process happen. So let's take a bit. And later on, we go further to flash one and pound, cold fusion, and some other experiments. What Sheila's team have discovered is that the spring-loaded power relies on two special areas of the appendage. The spring system in Mantis Shrimp is, is this very integrated outer skeleton structure. It consists of a saddle that's like the saddle on a horse and a strip, a thick sort of tight strip of exoskeleton that connects to it. And when that big muscle contracts, the whole thing compresses and prepares to strike and then it releases and this is the strip is like a, a metal ruler you could imagine pulling it at one end and it slams down like this that releases a tremendous amount of elastic energy under the microscope a distinctive saddle shaped part of the system can be clearly identified it's key to the operation of the ninja shrimp's weapon but not only for the energy it can release when they prepare to strike it curls up into a tight curve, and when they, when they release the appendage, it opens up, flattens out suddenly. This special structure helps to spread the load as the appendage is wound up for the strike. But mantis shrimps are not the only ones to discover the load-bearing properties of this structure. Being both light and strong, architects have found it to be the ideal shape for the roofs of many large buildings, such as this Olympic velodrome. Sheila's investigation had revealed the ingenious design of the ninja shrimp's weapon, but there were strange anomalies in the data. Each time the shrimp struck the force cell, more than one impact was registered. The slowed down images contained another surprise, a split second flash of light at the moment of impact. What could explain these strange events? What we saw was really amazing. There was a formation of a vapor bubble in between the appendage and the snail or whatever it's hitting. And it literally, there's a bubble that forms in the water. This bubble is called a cavitation bubble. And it's formed where you get very, very low pressure, where literally the, the water molecules are pulled away from each other to form a vapor bubble. When the bubble collapses or cavitates, it results in an explosion of energy. When it collapses, it emits heat, light, and sound. And when I say heat, I mean like 7,000 degrees Celsius, similar to the heat on the surface of the sun. It emits a very loud burst of noise, which we can actually hear. And then it emits light. It literally emits light. So it's a tremendously energetic event. This massive release of energy at the moment of impact acts like a phantom punch to help stun the prey. A secret weapon for the mantis shrimp that's a source of misery for many boat owners. Metal boat propellers spinning fast through the water also create cavitation bubbles. Over time, the metal propeller blisters and eventually is worn away. The ninja shrimp faces the same problem. The more it uses its weapon, the faster it's worn out. Or so you would think. Mantis shrimp have something that engineers and boat owners don't have. Mantis shrimp can regenerate their own body parts and they can also shed and regrow their exoskeleton. So on a regular basis, they just shed their whole exoskeleton and then they have a nice fresh new hammer ready to go. While their new armor hardens, the soft-bodied shrimp must fall back on its awesome reputation. Manta shrimp have developed one of the classic examples that we often turn to in biology of bluffing. Once they get into this time period of molting, when their bodies really are too soft, their muscles atrophy, they actually cannot strike. They cannot use these appendages during that time period. They pretend. So you come up and you see them going like this and showing off all their strikes, but actually they can't strike. When the molt is complete, the ninja shrimp will be both bigger and stronger. It seems like the perfect design, but at Sheila's lab, the story doesn't end here. The discovery of the mantis shrimp's secret weapon begs the biggest questions of all. Just how did the ninja shrimp evolve a weapon that produces cavitation, and can they control its destructive power? 
Engineer Suzanne Cox has designed an experiment to create cavitation in controlled conditions. We've built a model that has the same dimensions as a mantis shrimp. It has a spring that's similar to a mantis shrimp. And we can load it up just like a mantis shrimp does, and we can release it. Come on, man. Welcome to this channel. This is Wesley, and this is Wesley's News. Come on, man. Come on.